Hi and welcome back. So this is my Nest controller interfacing circuit. It uses a shift register and a couple of other support chips to implement the protocol for the Nintendo Nest controller. Now I'm planning to use one of these as an input device for my processor build when it gets to an advanced enough point to actually make some basic games for it. But I thought it'd be interesting to uh, not use an off-the-shelf NES controller and to make my own. So let's see what we can do about that. So firstly, I've taken the other half of the extension cable that I used to uh, create the original uh, interface cable for this board and stuck DuPont connectors on the end so I can uh, interface directly to that. Now the wire colours are the same, but I've skipped the blue and green wires. A few people have told me since I published the last video that those two connectors are for the light gun, and so I'm never going to use that. Now we don't need to run separate power to this board because we're basically getting it through this connector. So I believe the red line here is data. So yes, we can get all of those lines to go high or low, depending on how we set it. So this left-hand line, that's the clock. And so the one in the middle is going to be the latch line. Right, now when I was researching this circuit, I did uh, come across a reference that the Original NES controllers used a chip called the 4021, which is a 4000 series CMOS chip. I've got one of those here. Now this is a CMOS chip, so it can be a little bit more sensitive if we leave input lines floating, which is why for once I've actually disconnected the power. Let's have a look at the data sheet. Okay, so we've got these PI lines, which I'm guessing stands for parallel input. We've got eight of those. We've got a serial in, clock, and parallel serial control. Now this is where our latch line is going to go. Clock, well that's obviously our clock line. Okay, so we've got Q6, Q7, and Q8. That's interesting, actually. I'm guessing those are outputs. Okay, so yeah, buffered out. So I'm guessing that this is actually outputting the kind of top few bits of the shift chain. Okay, so when we do the latch output from here, we're immediately getting the burst bit. So... I'm guessing Q8 is what we want. So we've got our eight parallel inputs and we've got this serial inline. Now that's our one remaining input after the data lines. Let's pull that low. It doesn't actually matter if we pull that high or low, but we do need to uh, take it somewhere on a CMOS chip. Okay, now I'm going to try and wire in this set of dip switches. So we want to produce a TTL line. Okay, so let's kind of conditionally use the... Yeah, so let's, let's pull these high via a high resistor because we want to kind of invert the action based on these switches. So then what I want to do is pull them low by tying them all directly to ground. I'm going to try and shortcut the wiring though by using a much lower resistor for that. Save me plugging eight wires in here. So now I just need to make the data connections come across here. I'm using temporary plug wires for this because I'm intending to turn this into a PCB nice and quickly. Can it actually be that easy? Okay, this actually appears to be working. This is cool.
This is going to be a pretty tricky controller to operate if we've just got these eight dip switches. But obviously the plan will be to put this onto a PCB. And I think we should probably do the design for that. Now, I have ordered these last time I made an order with a component supplier. So I wanted to take a look at them. Now I believe these probably use kind of carbon pad contacts or something like that. And that's not a very practical thing for me to do unless I've got an old device to harvest the buttons from. These look far too big. These are surface mount push button switches. So you probably make some quite nice chunky buttons with those, but I don't think it's necessary because what I'll end up doing is 3D printing a case. Let's have a look at one of these. It's got a nice positive click to it. I think these are going to be okay. I quite like the way these have got the shape on the top that we could make something fit onto though. I'm not going to be able to get them close enough together to make a cross like that. I think we'll go with these. Okay, so let's take a look at creating a schematic for it. Right, now we're going to need a 4021. Okay, now if they don't sell them, that's going to be a problem. So LCSC is the kind of component sales company that's attached to EasyEDA and JLC PCB. So yeah, this, this looks like the right kind of thing. I want to do this as a surface mount just because it's going to make kind of mounting the whole board a lot easier. So if I don't put anything on the back, I can actually uh, stick it nice and flush against the back of a um, 3D printed case, and then I won't have any support problems. Okay, we should add a capacitor as well. Now we need one of these for each of the buttons. And these are pull-ups, so let's uh, get VCC in there. So we need power and ground on this connector. data. Okay, that's annoying. I think the wires on this uh, header don't exactly line up. I have to do that manually. Okay, so serial data in. That was the one we tied to ground. That was where clock went. This is mildly confusing. So the outputs here are zero based, whereas on the data sheet we looked at for a slightly different part, they were one based. So it's still pin free, but it's 07 we need. Okay, so now it's these button inputs we need to worry about. Okay, so I'm actually going to label these what they are as well. So it's A, B, 
Now select and start always get me because they're the opposite way around to A and B on the controller. If I get these wrong, it's going to be embarrassing when the PCB turns up. But so these are zero based and we've done these one based. Now, so those switches that I bought did come from LCSC, so I should be able to just type the code in for them. That's cool. They're pretty big on the schematic, though. Now, I'm going to want these terminals to go to both sides, but I don't know what the PCB tool is going to do. OK, now I think that circuit is complete. OK, it's only connected to one side of these. Now, this obviously doesn't make any electrical difference. I'm completely guessing at where these should be. On the SNES controller, A and B are at a slight angle in a square with two other buttons. And that's actually slightly more comfortable to push. So I'm going to try and do something similar to that. It's one of the huge benefits of making our own. Rather than the pin header, I'll probably be soldering the wires directly into that. I've never done drill holes before. You're going to need something to uh, to keep the controller together. I've made this PCB exactly 10 centimeters wide for a bit of cost efficiency. I can make it whatever height I want, and I think smaller might end up being better to a degree, as long as we've got enough room to get our fingers around these uh, buttons. It's the width between these that are most important because we can actually make the control whatever size we want. Now, Julian Illit did mention in a video this checkbox here, which is default off, or at least it was at last count, but I turned it on after a video of his showed how this option will cause it to not check if you've rebuilt your proper areas properly, which uh, has caught me out before. Okay, well that looks really nice. Now, I'm going to go ahead and 
get these made, I imagine this video will just continue with uh, the soldering. Okay, so I've got the PCBs back. I'm sometimes a little bit jealous that uh, you get to see things back to back in a video and I have to wait several weeks for these things to turn up. Let's take a look. That looks, looks pretty nice. Maybe these buttons are slightly close together, but uh, I do want a nice small device. Got another one of these extension cables to uh, pull the wires from. So yellow and brown are the power, orange, black and red are the data lines. Blue, green and grey are unused. Black and red being power and ground would have been much nicer, so whoever made these cables, thank you. Let's see if we can tin these wires. Okay, when we build a case for this, we need some kind of a strain relief system. So the yellow is definitely VCC. Brown is ground. Our data comes in over here, so that's the red line. And latch is the top right. Black. Orange must be clock. This is where I could definitely do some side cutters. the chip in first. I'm immediately thinking I made a mistake by uh, soldering those wires on because the board doesn't sit flat anymore. Too much overall solder on that, but as long as the contact's good, it should be fine.
I know some people are very keen on all the resistors going around the same way, despite the fact that it makes no difference. But just this once, I'm going to try and do it. OK, let's take a look at these switches. I was thinking I could do with a bigger solder. I suppose you want me to put these all the same way around as well. In theory, that circuit board will work. Place your bets. Oh, wowzers. Yeah, that works perfectly. That's great. Right. And nobody wants to use a bare PCB like this, so um, what I was thinking of doing is 3D printing a case. Let's have a look at that. Okay, now I want to design this similar to uh, a SNES controller. So position roughly in the middle of there, so I'd like cross bit to more or less be in the middle of a circle on the left. And I'd like a two millimeter boundary wall. Okay, so that's 69 mil. I want to create a border around the edge of this. Do not keep track of exactly how big I made this? I made this little box, 5 mil high, lined it up with the bottom of this, and then I can just create a cutting plane. So I now know this is 5 mil high. And to think about how the cable is going to be secured, I was hoping to take the wire out internally, wrap it around a couple of posts, but this wire is really thick and it doesn't like to bend in a tight circle so we will just build this out slightly and uh, try and get a bit of strain relief on it. Pull that up 
I've got a nice little interior profile. As a fish should be three mil thick. I want the base to be two mil. That's five mil. Need to add four to this. Subtract it, and there you go. That's the bottom of the uh, the project. And there's the top. Probably won't be quite this thick, but I just have a bit of material to work with. Okay, well that doesn't quite fit. Really wish I'd rounded the corners off this thing. There's not actually anything important there, so I could, uh, I could always just take a file to it if I needed to. Yeah, it's only a minuscule bit. I think I'm gonna use that. Okay, so what I've done here is created corner pieces that are going to hold the PCB in place. I've expanded the PCB out by 0.2 millimeters in every direction, so hopefully, even with a little bit of printer error, it should sit in there comfortably. Okay, so the screws I've got are three mil in diameter. That's 1.5 mil radius. So I'm going to look for holes that are 1.6. I know the hole separation here just from my earlier measurements, which I took off the PCB design. I have to eyeball this a bit though. Okay, the wires are soldered in around here. So I need to dig a little trough in the underside of this. Just to give them room. These extra fillets are entirely unnecessary, but it is uh, nice not to have the extra sharp bits. Okay, so the PCB is going to sit in between these four corners. Wire should go down there and the screw should come through these holes. Put a chamfer on the bottom here for the screws to sit flush. Need to work out what we're doing with the cable ingress. But that's pretty close, I think. So what we need, I need to worry about the top. And now we should have a pretty good reference to where our button should be. Okay, it would have been nice if these were central. Didn't give this enough thought when I was doing the PCB, but I think that's going to be okay. Right, let's think about the buttons. Now on both nez and snares, these are round, this is a cross, and these are more kind of lozenge shaped. On the snares they're at an angle, which might work well for us. Well those are pretty much just going to be cylinders with a bit of rounding on. Okay, so that is two millimetres radius. That can be four millimeters across, eight millimeters center to center. Now I need to make holes, but I need the holes to be very slightly larger than the buttons that are going to fit through them. Looks like that works. That's very good. So two of those, two of those, 
And then I need the cross shape. We don't have to be exactly accurate with this because we're just the, this is the hot spot that we're going to be pushing down on. So as long as we cover it, it's going to be good. She's starting to look like a controller now. Let's grab a copy of those. Very foolish, she didn't quite get all the way around there. Let's try 0.3 mil. Nah, 0.2. Easy as pie. Almost as if I know what I'm doing. Now I need some pillars. Okay, so I've done some measuring and I think this whole control is gonna come out in the body is 13 millimeters high. She has to make it 14 millimeters, divides by two comfortably, which means we want the top and the bottom to each be seven mil. Oh yeah, that was exactly seven already. So that must be as well. Now I'm going to print the two halves of this with the top surface on the bottom and the bottom surface on the bottom. I'll probably print them separately just to avoid issues. Now I need to think about that strain relief. We've got a good few mil there. I think I'm just going to build the wall out there slightly and then cut a hole in it if it's the right diameter. I can glue the cable in if need be, but when the halves of the case come together, they should clamp it. Okay, so the cable is four and a half, so I'm going to call it. 4.6, so it needs to be 2.3. Having things that stick out is always difficult, but 45 degrees you can just about do. Just realised that adding that will take off my measurements very slightly for positioning the PCB. Let's see if we can get a guesstimate on it. This used to be minus 2.5. That's going to be slightly too far now. Minus 1.9. Okay, let's tidy up the bottom and see if we can make it print. I'd really like to get a bit of registration between the top and the bottom. One millimeter. I'm going to go with 1.5. Right, I'll be very. Uh, Curious to see that print.
Okay, while that's printing away, I'm going to finish off the top. Now, the main thing we're missing there, apart from a little bit of tidy up, we need the rim that's going to mate with this. We need to extend the interior down by a millimetre and put a chamfer on it. And we also need the posts that the screws are going to go into. Okay, if I've measured this right, I've got about six and a half millimeters below the top surface to contact the tops of the buttons. And I want the buttons to come about two millimeters above that. And the top is two millimeters thick. And this chamfer is about one millimeter. So the bottom part of the button needs to be five and a half mil and then the upper half is 3 mil. I want the bottom half to sit under the chamfer, so I need to expand it out by a millimeter again. Okay, well, I'd like to do these in one color and then the buttons in individual colors. I might get slightly better results on these lozenge shaped ones if I printed them individually, but let's, uh, let's give it a go and see how it comes out. Okay, so all the parts are printed. I had a little bit of a uh, problem with the gray parts. It, the print failed, so I printed them again individually and that was all okay. So I've got these threaded inserts which are going to hold it together. Now getting those in is going to be a little bit tricky. The method I normally use would be very difficult to put on camera. So I'm going to try out using this crimping tool. Getting it started is the difficult bit. This is a tool for IDC cables. push these ever so slightly below the surface. So I very foolishly didn't add any clearance on here, so I'd rather have the plastic in contact with the board and not the metal. 
Now we need to work out how to assemble it. It did occur to me that it would have been smart to provide some way of clipping this in. And I'll eventually want to probably just glue the cable in, but I don't want to do it quite that thick straight away. Let's try a bit of double-sided sticky tape. If I turn this over, all the buttons are going to fall out. If I turn this over, the PCB will fall out. Just needs to hold it long enough to uh, get the thing assembled. Learn something new of every project, and this project's learning is Worry about how you're going to assemble it. Okay. That's all the buttons working. That's great. I'm really pleased with this. I've got a, a few things I would do differently if I did it again. I'd think a little bit more about how this was going to pivot, but I'd also remember how trying to put this kind of detail on top of a 3D print is uh, always produces a slightly bad mess. But no, I'm very happy with that. That's pretty cool. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed and found this interesting. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.